All right. I have been tasked with the duty of creating a literacy document um, according to details and strategies, strategies I used throughout two classes. First, I'll start by saying uh, my name is Shakir Williams. Um, to, to, I, I was the first class that I did that I, that I taught. I did, I did le the lessons were, were, were a mixed class. Next is a grade is a grade twelve class. A combination of grade twelve R and twelve H. The lesson was based on a basketball lesson, and I was able to implement some literacy strategies within the lesson. Yeah. that I believe helped enhance the lesson as well as not only help develop their literacy skills but see exactly where they, where they were at I've dealt with this class for about 26 months now and um, I, I, I believe I developed a, 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 relationship, a, relationship with both, a relationship with both of these classes that they um, have now you know, respected my teaching right. methods because it's, it's something unique. They're not used to the UB way of things and the, or, the, or I'll say the Ministry of Education's way of things in terms of what they are requiring now with lessons and lesson planning. So I believe that it, just me doing something different within my lesson each time kind of sparks their interest. Um, so um, let's, go, let's begin with the documentary. These are some photos of me taking throughout the lesson, kind of um, directing the students and instructing them. Uh, it was a good experience. All right. And um, I believe the students did well, and I believe that the, the strategies helped enhance their learning experience. All right. Um, once again, I'll say uh, the, the, the first lesson was based on, was, was done with um, class 12H and 12R. As you can see, I'm using the, I'm starting off with the semantic feature analysis um, literacy strategy. I believe that this, this, this um, strategy will help not only awaken their, their, um, their, their ability to kind of um, be in tune with the class, but it, it helps introduce words to them that they may not be used to that are used throughout um, physical education classes. Um, I believe it also kind of um, widens their vocabulary and gives them an understanding on the relationship that the relationship these words have, or the relationship the skills of, 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 of skills for different sports. So I, I chose to use this to kind of help assist. Them understanding how how closely closely related skills are in different sports. So I'm this is me here explaining to them um, exactly what we what they'll be doing, how they'll be doing it. I had to kind of get the camera to somebody else because the person wasn't really doing a good job recording. So I gave it to someone like a dress. And uh, she was doing a good job. She recorded my last lesson, so I decided to let her set the job again and do it again for me. Um, the students were very um, cooperative. Like I said, every time we come to come to something new to them, something that they're not used to, they tend to kind of be intrigued, so they kind of tune in. And as you can hear, they're quick to answer que um, questions or answer things based on this particular. Um, activity. They, they were quick to answer, so I, could, I, I, it made it easy for me to kind of get them in tune, and I, I also use it as an introduction. You know, when it comes to physical education classes, it's a limited amount of time. Um, general classes have more time to teach lessons because they don't have to focus on st students changing clothes. Whereas with physical education classes, we have to take in consideration that the students have to change. Come into class and change after class. So you have to make sure the lesson is planned in a way where as you, you take into consideration them changing before and after class. You just give them time to change before, before the next class. So there'll be a certain point in time within the lesson that you have to cut short so that they, they can um, get back to the welcome to change, back in the uniform, to go back to um, other, other classes. But it was an enjoyable lesson. This was an enjoyable part of the lesson. I guess I believe it really um, kind of sparked the interest. 
So, um, I kind of stuck with it. And I, I try, I try to make it a little humor, humorous for them. Make it humorous for them, so they got a little fun with it. I believe it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a smart way of, uh, of getting the students to be interested in the lesson. So, I try to put personality within like a classroom, my glasses. That's called essential relationships, all right? Y'all can get separated from the truth. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. I, I see them, I see them. All right? So now let's go into the next. Give me the next um, thing. I'll put this up. Give me the next. Uh, Child. Child, right? Yes, quickly. So, let it be, let it be, let it be. Last one, let it be. Let it be. Let it be. Stop it. Don't stop it. Keep going. <laughs> all right, so. Now after after um allowing the students to kind of go through the semantic um feature analysis at this point in time I already got their um interest peaked so I, what, I, what I did was I kind of went into using my chart visual charts to kind of show them exactly what we will be doing within the lesson now when it comes to um. P glasses, all P glasses, we, we have to use charts. Some kind of visual aid to kind of help students understand, you know, what do we do, what we'll be doing and, and, and let them see for themselves which, which you demonstrating. So, what I did was I created my own chart, um, allow students to kind of see exactly what I wanted. I put in keywords on the chart that will be mentioned throughout the lesson to help them understand how to practice and how to perform the skill properly. And after allowing them to kind of see what I want and what will be required throughout the lesson, I went into the actual lesson. So today's lesson was on layups, shooting layups. Started off with the right hand layup. Um, most students did well. I believe that because of I taught this lesson to them before. And I believe that because of what um what they experienced in the past, it made them kind of better at, the, at practicing the skill. Because prior to this lesson, it wasn't really a good class. The students had a hard time understanding. But me, kind of using different uh, methods, particularly the, the feature analysis, it kind of enabled them to kind of have a deeper understanding on how to perform a skill as well as well as using the chart so as you can see me demonstrating for them and me allowing them themselves to practice the skill most of them got it but some of our time because they're not really you know basketball related i'm savvy but as time when time goes on as they practice they'll get better at it and i i i know this that's why i didn't really um require too much of them i, I didn't expect everybody in the class to hit a layup on their first go some of them, them play basketball in their life. Some play track. Some play softball. So their body aren't really bodies are bodies aren't really used to this, this, this particular sport. Yeah, so I, I went through the lesson. After going through the lesson. I have to go to this part of the lesson. All right. the right I, um, I moved on to something different. So another literature skill, another another um literacy skill that could help students um gain a better understanding on the skill performed today and what will be required of them in the other class. I also, I also want to see what, what all the stu students retain. So as I go on to the next part of the documentary, I will show and narrate what, what is happening. Uh, during this part of the documentary, this is why I, I went into um, the second literacy strategy, which was free writing. I wanted to see where students stood in terms of their understanding of the skill. You know, when it comes to education, there are different multiple, multiple learning styles. And many students learn good, they learn well through movement. 
but some prefer to read, some prefer to write. You know, so however they, however they, they whatever method they prefer, it helps them understand the particular, particular topic that is being discussed in the class. So therefore, I, I decided to choose free writing to see where how students understood the lesson and the methods that I, I that I chose throughout the lesson. How well they can um, put together not only not only um, what they reminisce from the class or what they remember from the class, but do they recall actually how to perform the skills, and could they write it out and say it? So I gave them instructions to to write out what they learned throughout the class based on the three met the three skills that we went over and how to perform it. You know and. It was interesting seeing a lot of them. A lot of them was kind of distracted. Had to separate a few students from one another from talking. Some got through pretty easily, some didn't. Some were having a hard time kind of putting together sentences. And I was able to determine the set who kind of didn't understand the lesson. And it was amazing that most of the students who, who, who had a hard time writing out how to perform the skill in terms of like, in a, in, in a free, write, free writing exercise, Many of them didn't do well when, in performing the skill. So at that time I knew that I'd have, have to go over the lesson again and find new methods for them to kind of understand the skill on a practical and theoretical basis. However, most of them, the majority of them did pretty good jobs. I only asked them to write a paragraph, only to write a paragraph and most of them did it. Some, yeah, I, I, explained them, like, I explained them that free writing is a uh, Exercise that you know, you don't have to worry about punctuation or grammatical errors. Just focus on trying to write out what it is that you recall from the class. And so, I believe that's a great activity used to help students kind of get into wanting to write. Because some students prefer to write than to read. You know, many ask me questions like, as if, like, where is this going? Is, 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 are people gonna go read? Gonna 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 see our papers? Or are is the recording gonna be um um? Posted somewhere that they can be embarrassed. I told them that it's, it's for a class assignment and that they won't be placed in a position where they feel like they're being embarrassed. So um, it was a good good lesson, and I believe that it was a successful one. Now to move on to the second lesson, which I actually actually liked more because it was a new topic that I didn't get a chance to go over all, all the semester. So I was excited about it and I really put my foot into it. So stay tuned, go into part two of the documentary. <laughs> you you <laughs>
You will understand that. <laughs> yeah, I got a start. Hey, what you finish? Okay, what you finish? Okay, right? Follow me on Instagram. My Instagram. Follow me on Instagram. Go over there. Go over there. Go over there. Go over So yes, I am excited for this part of the documentary. Um, this is my lesson two, my my grade eleven R. Um, the methods that we use I use in this particular part of the um the documentary is um reading guide um which will open the understanding on the lesson and uh, for and, re and, and reading to follow instructions follow directions using graphic charts all right so i, I i'm gonna make in charts you know i say i don't like to read as much but I, I i've learned too as an educator i learned to read more especially i'm trying to encourage literacy in classrooms and so I, I gotta be example, you know, so for what I preach it, what I'm preaching. Um, I, like I said, I enjoyed this part of the lesson. I was waiting probably two semesters to teach this lesson. It was on um, j shooting jump shots in basketball. And that's one of my favorite skills. And I wanna know, who knows, you know, they know I played basketball for many years, even on a co co collegiate level. So anytime I get a chance to break it down and teach it, uh, it's, it's wonderful for me. It's a great experience. Um, so what I did was I, I um, printed out the reading guides based on shooting jump shots and free throws about the I guess developing the form and having the right feet work, the footwork, um, right stance, body posture, the jumping stance, the jumping um, technique, and and so forth, including the follow through. I put all of these if it's information about how to do so, how to do it, and when to do it, step by step, but in a reading guide. And the reading guide only, only also contains benefits of why you should do it and why it's important to do it as a basketball player. Because it, and what it basically said, stated, stated was that it helps widen your ability to score on the basketball court in a game. So I allowed students to read. Several got a chance to read. I allowed the other set to follow for time's sake. So I allowed them to follow along. Everybody had their own paper, and they followed along while, as I chose students to read. Some were a little, you know, shy, so I stopped them, allowed someone else to read before them to kind of give them confidence, and I allowed them to read or after, you know. So it was a good experience, good, good lesson. After the reading, I went straight into the the, 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 the chart, the graphic chart. I allowed students to see for my for themselves. I made two charts. One with just pictures and graphics on it, one with, with actually directions on it also. Because I needed more space. And what I did was I took pictures of myself performing the skill, step by step. And then I put the steps in words and allowed them to read it and view it at the same time. And I believe this really helped them understand what they, what, what, what they need to be done. It helped them progress in performing the skill. And many of you, although I didn't have the strength to perform this because it's... When it comes to shooting jump shots, you need strength. And it takes time and practice. Every skill that you're learning that is new, it takes time and practice. So by doing this, by allowing them to see it, see this information from a literacy perspective, I believe it helped enhance their progression in performing the skill. It was, a, it was, a, it was an amazing time, and I had a lot of fun with them. Um, I had a, a chance to share my skills also, which I believe, which, which I believe motivated them even, even more. You know, so we, well, I'll, let you go, I'll let you guys go into this watching, watching the documentary and seeing what I did. Um, 
like I said, it was a great experience. And it, it, I think this is a very good tactic to use in the schools. Help kind of help students become more and more in tune with the lesson. And after um, a lot of them to see the charts and to read, they were very, very, very motivated to step in and actually um, form the skills. I actually, I actually went, let them go over the reading the, of the visual charts more than one time, so that they can, so that they can um, remember everything, every step. Then I demonstrated for them what to do. So what I'll do, I'll go into the lesson. I'll go into let you see the lesson, and then we will get into um, the other part, part of the lesson, which is um, I'm in the documentary, documentary, where it's me analyzing. And concluding. All right. We're going to go to the free throw. Y'all are talking about that. We're off the You got to be talking to make a lot. All right? We're going to free throw. And the jump shot. You're the shooting techniques. All right? Come L. My former L. And then facing the basket, using my off arm, which is the hand that you're not shooting with, to guide the ball, all right? All right. Here, my knees are bent. Sorry, my amateur. My knees are bent. What's happening here? You notice the ball shift, it shifts from here to there. Notice the angle of my elbows have changed. I'm elevating, I'm getting ready to elevate my arm so I can get ready to shoot, all right? Here. Pushing the ball up to the highest peak, and I'm falling through using my fingertips, right? Falling through. All right? So that's, that's the first thing we do. We do the kind of first, right? So I want you to read this together. Okay, let me see it. Hold on, hold on. What's up, man? Let's do it together, man. One, two, three. Good luck. Alright. So, we don't have to do now, right? So, we Right, to conclude, this is a wonderful documentary. I just want, I just want to say that I had a good time making and creating the the videos, and I like I like tech stuff, so it was easy for me to put together. The hardest part was kind of just doing the voiceover and getting it to match different sections of the of the documentary documentary, but it was great. Um, in regarding um, the literacy um, skill of secondary school students, I do believe that 
our students are not as illiterate as people may think. It's just that we need to put more. Th- we we need to put more um, more focus on it. I believe that school has become a rhythm, like a like a, a motion thing. We're going through the motion. Teachers going through the motion. It, it's become not 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 a ministry, but a job. In in many cases, and we have too many people who take on the job, and re- and forget that raising students is a ministry. Teaching students is a, is a ministry. And so I believe that the love for it, for educating students, isn't there. You know, and I believe the ministry has to be careful who they hire. They need to ensure that we hire teachers trained, um, adults who, who, who went through the process, so that we can ensure that students get the best quality education. The students, I, I dealt with in my grade 11 and 12 classes, they are very intelligent. They, they demonstrate, they showed it to me. They showed my video, they corrected me. There were times where I messed up and they corrected me. They taught me things. And I had a chance to deal with them from last year. So I've seen for myself um, how smart they are, how literate they are. It's just that they need, we need more assistance in focusing on it. If we know it, it's, this is a weakness, we need to focus on it. And I believe that it's, it's too long. I've been neglected too long. And we spend more time complaining about it than actually trying to implement plans and strategies that could kind of correct the situation, correct the issue. For too long, we had adults complaining about the students in the schools when we we we, we complain so much, we don't, but we don't try and find method, methods or ways to kind of create some sort of support, some sort of relief. You know, I I, I my experience is great with them. I I think they're very literate. We just need more support, more focus on that situation on that, on a particular t- topic. And we'll see some changes. I believe that having literacy strategies, literacy strategies in school is very important. First and foremost, most of the students, the teachers that were around me, my cooperating teachers, didn't even know what I was doing. <laughs> they they looked at me as if like, what is this? I had to explain to them what I'm doing, you know. And their excuse when I explained them, their, their excuse was time. But if I can make time to do what you can too. Me as a person who's just who's a student teacher about to be a, a trained teacher can find a way to create a plan and create a, way, a, a lesson plan that can implement literacy. If I can do it, you can do it too. But like I said, people get lazy. They get lazy, get complacent, and they take, they take it as a job instead of ministry. And we end up with, 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 with students not becoming more and more advanced in literacy because teachers aren't doing their jobs. They were helpful. The literacy, the literacy strategies were helpful. Regarding um, doing anything differently, I probably would. I probably would add three strategies instead of two. They love them, and maybe next time do, I'll do a theoretical class instead of doing a physical class and put them in the classroom, whereas I can focus more on literacy, make them have them reading more, have a PowerPoint so they can see more graphic pictures that help them gain an understanding. I believe that every class, every physical education class, before you teach them a new skill, it requires. A PowerPoint, a PowerPoint presentation, so they can see exactly what it is that you require of them. Because some students learn differently, and I, I and from from what I've seen, after he, after my experience with not doing it this this particular way throughout the documentary, and now doing it that way, I've seen students become better at it. Because I've taught those students the same thing before, and they they have not done the same. They have not not done so well. I believe that it gave them a better understanding on the skill skills that I wanted them to perform, and that's why they perform so well. Regarding um, this inside instruction or in contact contact areas, I believe that as a, as a teacher, I will flourish. Like, like I said, I, I would just focus so much on physical, but I put theory classes within within my within my content and within my 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 strategy of teaching to help my students understand the deeper understand more in depth what it is that I require for them to do. Some teachers go out and they just perform a skill in front of the teacher, the students, and expect them to get it. Sometimes you have to show them a different way from a different perspective. Sometimes you have to give them a PowerPoint presentation. Or make a create or create a song, or let them write an essay on it. Let them research something. Let them read something so they can understand it better. Because every every student learns differently. 
So I my 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 focus will be as a teacher or a prospect teacher is to be diverse. They include different ways and different strategies to help students understand what it is I'm trying to teach them. I, regarding recommendations, um, we, we need principals and teachers and attorney teachers in the Ministry of Education to kind of enforce how important literacy is. We, we really do. We need them to enforce it. I, I believe that we know what is required, but I believe that at, at a certain point, it comes down to chin of command to a certain point and someone neglects it. Whether it be the principals, whether it be teachers, no one is perfect. And I'm, not, I'm not trying to point fingers at no particular person on body of the, of the, of, of the, of the educational um, system. But at some point in time, when it comes down from the chin of command, it isn't, it isn't, it isn't done. So we need to make sure that all educators, principals, and so on are on accord. Because if 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 we all don't want to go ahead and try to increase literacy in schools, then it will never be done. We are a body, a body that work need, that needs to work together. Um, using video recordings is great because I believe that showing them before you show them out in person that you can do it in in, in, a, in a different light, kind of. And then you have to understand that we live in a generational area in an era that is technological technology advanced. We have TikTok and YouTube and all these things. People, students are learning how to do certain things of YouTube videos. So you showing them certain things that you teach on, on in videos is right, is right up their alley. They already they already um used to it. They already familiar with it. So why not use the same method? You know, so re- reflecting on um use the use of re- recordings of yourself teaching in this in, in an assignment. I, I I really believe that it, it is a benefit. It beneficial to education. Especially in the area that we're in, you don't see no one using typewriters no more. Everybody using t- keyboards and, t- and, and computers, or, or notepads, iPads. So as tech, so as technology advances, us as educators, we are, as educators must stay in tune with what's going on and, and up to date. You can also be using, using satellite when everybody's streaming, you know. So I, I believe that it keeps teachers in a, in a, in, a, in a, having an understanding of where students are at. And we're meeting them where they're at. Sometimes you have to meet them where they're at before you demand that they meet you where you where, where you're at. All in all, it was a great um, assignment, a great adventure, and I, I really thoroughly enjoyed this documentary. I pray that whoever gets a chance to kind of view this, but also benefit from benefit from the information that was given.